Okay. Um, I knew that one. In elementary school, I remember career day usually had a police officer. Most times there was a fireman and someone from the military, but there was always a police officer. And we could watch him walk in with his big smile, being so proud of his position, so proud of his badge and his gun, you know, a police officer. Well, in 1991, I was shot. And as I laid on the floor, the policemen rushed into my apartment, never asked me a question. They just began to frisk me. And I'm guessing for whatever reason, they missed the pool of blood that I laid in. And maybe the cries from my loved ones sounded like alarm systems. I guess those gurgling sounds that I made mimic gangster rap instead of an SOS cry for help because they never saw me as a victim. Never as a victim. I guess a thug was more for their preference. So the first time I showed up in school on career day as a poet, there was a police officer. And I wonder in that moment whose title weighed more, which one said community service and which one actually said thug. I wonder if he knew that he would be the center of a conversation and a hashtag. I wonder, I wonder if he knew that his profession would never lessen the body count in the area that he patrolled in. I wondered if he had a son and if his son ever watches the news. Does his son know how many lies are buried beneath his daddy's covers to turn the other cheek at what's obviously going on today? Yeah, you see this code of silence don't erase the death tolls. It doesn't bring back the lives that seeped out through those bullet wounds. I wonder I wonder if he knows that his daddy's silence represents to us and how it feels like burning crosses on a Mississippi lawn, how it feels like lynch mobs and niggas on plantations. Does he know his father's silence sounds like Corey Chico, Negro, run, black boy, run. College ain't for you, so run. This best be, you best be from around these places, run. Black kids and sweet snacks equals patrolmen, run. You got CDs, well, I got a police sergeant. Your black skin is a threat, nah, that's just target practice. That's a police traffic and homicides. Yo, I wondered, I wonder how does he sleep at night? And how he, if he clears his eye socket with the same trigger finger used to kill Trayvon Martin to kill Tamir Rice. I wonder if his conscious whispers sounds like George Zimmerman, like Ben Carson giving a black boy's eulogy. Does it sound like Master Tom orchestrating Negro spirituals overseeing the black people studying Bibles? So I tried to see if he could understand what this felt like for me in this room with these shining black faces, smiles to the left of me, and a murderer to the right of me, hashtags on CNN, black lives labeled as troublemaking groups. I wonder, I wonder if he felt like standing there next to me felt good. And then I wondered if he felt threatened. 